Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please click on like and subscribe. If you've been here before, welcome back. I'm going to do a video on the Ring doorbell app or the Ring app. Uh, I haven't done one of these for uh, probably a year, year and a half now. They've come out with a lot of different updates. So I'm going to go over the new features on here as of June of 2023. Now I've got three different types of cameras hooked to mine. So I'm going to show you settings in each one. Um, most of the settings are, are the same except for on the battery power cameras. They're a little bit different. Uh, so on our front doorbell, our video doorbell cameras look a little bit different. Now Ring makes 10 different video doorbell cameras probably at least. So your menu may vary a little bit, but it should be similar. Uh, for instance, if you've got a battery powered doorbell, some of the features aren't available. The battery doorbell bells, the battery, the battery powered doorbells do not let you do live view or they'll only record every so often. That's to keep you from draining your battery. If it recorded all the time, like the power cameras do, your batteries would be dead every other day and you'd have to charge them. So some of the features aren't available on the battery power cameras that are on the power cameras. So we're going to click on the settings gear by the front door. So once you get this open, you'll see ring alerts, motion detection, motion alerts, motion warning. So first thing on the top are ring alerts. And that's if somebody actually physically presses the doorbell, pushes the button, and it rings the doorbell. It's going to come up on your phone and tell you somebody's at your front door. Or somebody's ringing your front doorbell. Or somebody's at the door, depending on what you set up in here later. And I'll show you how to change all that. The motion detection is basically so it will record anything that moves. If you turn the motion detection off, it doesn't record anything that happens outside. So do not turn the motion detection off. Then in time it would record so if you had the ring alerts on. The motion alerts are what sends your notification to your phone saying there's something in your front yard or there's somebody in your front yard, backyard, whatever. So you can turn that off if you want to. Like let's say it's in a populated area or on the side of your house and you don't want to get notifications all the time because there's a dog or something out there. You can turn that off or you can hit snooze if something's in the yard. The motion warnings where the camera itself will come up and tell somebody uh, you're being recorded, um, leave now. That's the newest feature that you see on TV, uh, fancy schmancy stuff. So a couple of these I'm not going to click on, but we'll, we'll go over them anyhow. Event history, that's basically everything that's happened in that camera that it's recorded. Accessories, when you click on that, that's going to come up with ring chimes. Um, Level Locks, Ring Chime Pro. It's basically going to try to sell you a bunch of stuff that you may or may not want. The mode settings, this is back to where home, stay away. We covered this in another video so you can tell it whether what you want it to do in each one of these settings. So if you go into disarm mode, this is what's going to happen when you when your system's in disarm mode. Uh, and you can turn on and off different features of depending on whether it's a camera or a sensor or a motion camera or battery camera. You'll have different icons in here you can either turn on or off. Link devices. When you go into link devices, you can actually link more than one device. So let's say, for instance, you've got a camera on the front of your house. You've got a front door camera. You can actually have the front door camera turn on. And when the front door camera picks something up, it can turn on the garage camera also. So you can have it turn on different cameras around the house. So they're already recording. If something passes from one camera to the next camera, you can catch the, the, the whatever's going on with it. You can also get an alarm sent to you, and it'll pop up and it'll tell you that something's happened. Or you can turn the lights on when something's triggered. So let's say, for instance, you went to the, uh, someone came by the uh, front door, because that's what we're in right now. You can have the garage record the event, and then we can actually turn on lighting. So if you've got lights outside the house, uh, spotlights, floodlights, things like that. You can actually pop the lighting on if you wanted to. So I'll turn that back off because I don't want to save that in mine. And when you get done, you hit the save icon at the top. Rings. If somebody rings the doorbell, same thing. If somebody actually physically pushes the button on the doorbell, you can set the other cameras up to record or alert you, which we've already done on the other menu. Motion snooze, when we click on that, that takes you into snooze that one camera. So on the front page, we had the little icon at the top that snoozed all the cameras. This will just snooze that one particular camera for however long you pick. Link chimes, these are the chimes, the chime pros. Um, I don't have any chimes actually hooked to mine right now. But basically, you can add the chime modules, which I went over earlier. That will extend the range of your ring doorbell or ring cameras. And it will ring in different rooms of your house so you can hear it ringing if for some reason you can't hear it or if you want it in a workshop or a shed or out back you can add chimes to it 
device health. This will tell you whether your signal strength is good. Um, if you put, let's say you, you changed your router, you can change your Wi-Fi network in here. You can name your product, test the Wi-Fi, troubleshoot notifications. Um, you can check the status of the ring system, uh, device health report. Um, and if you have a battery power camera, it would actually show your battery in here and it would tell you, like my transformer voltage is good. If it was a battery, it would tell you um, battery is low or battery is at 50%. Some devices like the stick-up cam or not the stick-up cameras, the um, uh, spotlight cameras have like two batteries in it, so it would show you both batteries health. Motion settings, when we go in here. Now again, this is something that will change depending on the camera you have, the make, the model, the year, everything around it. This is basically so you can create zones around your house so certain things that move will or will not trigger the alarms. So when I click on this, this is going to pull up a big menu. You can see where I've got all the blue lines out around here. That's areas I don't want motion to pick up. So that tree up in the top right hand corner, when the wind blows that tree, it doesn't make my alarm sound. It doesn't give me a notification. I've got my driveway there, so when someone pulls in the driveway, it'll send me a notification. But I've got the neighbor's driveway bar marked off, so when they come home, it doesn't notify me. Anything goes in that blue area, I get a notification or it starts recording. And again, some of these are a little bit less, um, uh, they, they don't have as many features. You can't drag as many places. You've got to qu create squares in there instead of being able to add drag and drop uh, on some of the older cameras. Now, something else you can do is you can create another zone. So let's say, for instance, um, you could um, block the tree out up on the top right and then block a bush out on the bottom left and leave everything else blue. So if for some reason you've got a bunch of landscaping pieces but you still want to record all the area, you can just block out individual trees and bushes that way by creating more camera motion zones, which is right there. You would just add a zone and create more zones. Sensitivity, you can minimum, maximum. Basically, the bigger the object, um, the less sensitivity it needs to trigger it. So you can adjust the sensitivity there. If you get, you know, if you you're in a squirrel zone uh, or a cat zone or something like that, you don't want the thing going off all night recording cats and squirrels. So you can set it to more uh, less sensitive so it doesn't pick that up. It only picks up people, cars, things like that. Smart alerts, um, basically uh, get emotion alerts and recordings um, or neither. So basically if it thinks there's a person out there, it can send you an alert. If it's other motions that it doesn't think is a person, you can turn that on too. Uh, if someone records a, or drops a package, it can pick up the UPS guy now. And I think they're starting to add facial recognition and clothing recognition into these. So it'll be able to tell whether they're wearing a blue outfit or brown outfit. And eventually we'll be able to tell you whether it's UPS, FedEx, or anything like that at your door. Advanced settings. This is basically so you can set schedules. So basically during certain times of the days it will and will not record. So if you don't want to get motion alerts throughout the day, you could set it every day between 9 and 10 o'clock. Don't send me alerts. Or if you don't want alerts in the middle of the night, you could turn off the alerts in the middle of the night. So device settings. In here, it's going to have some of the features that we saw in other places. Um, so I'm not going to go over them too in uh, depth, but basically you got video settings. When you click on that, you can do the color night vision, uh, which and it gives you better viewing in low light situations. Uh, you don't want green people at your door, so I usually leave the color night vision on. The tap camera for preview live, leave that on so you can see live events as they happen. And the video recording length, again, depending on your um, your internet speed and your camera, I usually leave that to auto, but you can adjust that to 60 seconds if you want it, or 30 seconds if you only want to record smaller amounts. Snapshot capture. This captures images whether it's recording or not. So let's say there's no motion happening in the yard. You can set this so every one minute, every 30 seconds, or every three minutes, it just takes a snapshot. So even though nothing's happening, when you go to your playback mode and you start skimming through, It'll take a picture every minute or every 30 seconds without recording the video. So it's just on still images. So for some reason, there's something off the camera just far enough, or let's say someone's at your neighbor's house, but you have the motion not to set, you still may be able to capture an image of something happening that's not in your motion zone or somewhere else on the camera that's not close enough to trigger your camera to motion. Notification settings. Rich notifications. When you click on this, basically, 
when it sends you the notification on the phone, it's going to send you a picture. So you won't just get, you know, someone's at your front door. You're going to get someone's at your front door with a picture of them in there. So it basically just shows you a small image of what's going on. I've got that enabled. It comes in handy because when you get a motion alert, you don't have to take the time to open the camera, all that. You can just look on the alert and see what it was. The app alert tones. So tones on here, you can change each one of these. And again, we're still in the front door here. You can change it to do all these different things. So if you want your doorbell to sound like a cowbell, you can pick cowbell. You can pick uh, where it says someone's at the front door. You can say uh, someone at Doorbell Pro. Basically, you can pick it to the dog's bark on your phone. These are just app alerts. Like if you're getting a text message, this is the sound your phone's going to make when you pick one of them. So if you click the cowbell or something like that, you're going to get a cowbell. If you click motion alerts, same thing. Uh, instead of someone actually being at the door ringing the bell, what you're going to get is one of these pop up on your phone. So I don't want cowbell, I want someone's at my front door. And then my phone will actually say someone's at your front door. Link chimes, we're back to the chime modules again. If you have a chime module hooked up, you can set the chime module to do different things too. So you can actually set the chime to do a Westminster chime, happy birthday, whatever you want it to play. Help and content, um, we went over that on a different page. Basically it takes you to Ring's website for help. It takes you to their vlog. Shared access. Shared access is where you can invite other people to hear. We covered that also. Basically, if you want to add friends, neighbor, relative, spouse, whatever, this is the menu. We go in to add them as a user. Click on that and add their email account, and then they can have access to your cameras. So I'm going to pick a stick-up camera this time. So this is a Ring stick-up camera, and it shows you a picture of it in the top corner. You notice I don't have the Ring alert on here because you can't ring the bell. I've got motion detection, motion alerts, motion warning, same thing. Uh, as before, the motion detection records anything when there's motion. The motion alerts will actually send you an alert on your phone since I work in my garage all the time, even though it says kitchen. Every time I walk through the garage, my phone will alert me and let me know something's moving in there. Uh, you'll notice this one actually has a siren button on it. So you can hit the siren, you can actually set off a siren on that little thing. It makes a little bit of noise. Uh, probably not enough to scare anybody away, but at least they would know that you know that they're in the house. So most of your other cameras beside your doorbell will have a siren alert on them. So down at the bottom you'll see there's still all the icons. So at the bottom you'll see there's still the same uh, icons that were on the other camera. Uh, same features are inside there. Again, some things are a little bit different, but basically if you watch the other part of the video, you'll know, you'll, you'll be able to walk yourself through that. All right, so I'm going to click on this middle camera here. This is a spotlight camera. So basically this is a battery powered camera. When I click on it, it shows you a picture of the camera we're working on. Uh, I've got this set up in the garage basically so we can go over the settings with you. If you look at the top right, this camera has two batteries in it. One's red, one's green. So pretty much I've drained one of the batteries on this camera already. Um, the other battery still looks like it's fully charged. I'll show you how to check that in a minute. You've got a lights icon on here so you can actually turn the lights on this. So if it's in your backyard and you use it for a floodlight or a spotlight, you can click on that and actually light up the yard. Uh, the motion detection, this is the same as the other cameras. Uh, picks up motion, starts recording. The motion alerts will send you an alert on your phone or mobile device. And the motion warning will tell people, hey, get out of my yard. Um, you're being recorded on camera. Siren sets off the siren on it. Uh, same thing on here with the other one. The event history is the same. The accessories is the same. Mode settings are the same. Device schedules is the same. Link device is the same. Motion snooze same. When you click on the device health, this will actually show you the battery power. Like the other one just showed you the... Um, uh, transform was in good shape. This actually shows you my left battery is at 28%, my right battery is 100%. I've got a solar panel on this one, so it shows it's connected and, and it's green, so it's working properly. Shows your signal strength, which is green, which is good. If it's yellow or red, you need to move your uh, router or you need to get a Ring Pro to boost your signal. Change your network if you change the um, Wi Fi in your house. Power settings. On the battery power cameras, you can do the capture snapshot. And again, this is the same as the other one. So again, your, your battery power camera is going to record less to save energy for the camera. If it records all the time, it's not going to be a good thing. So if you pick this to record every five minutes, it's going to take a snapshot every five minutes. It's going to suck down your battery. So most likely you want to keep it on every hour unless you've got a good solar panel and it's, let's say, um, summertime you're less likely for anything to happen at five o'clock in the morning if the battery dies overnight it'll still be recording through most of the night it may die by morning if you only have one battery in there 
So motion frequency, when we click on that, you can have it check for motion and it takes breaks in between. Now again, this is not really made for recording full time. A powered camera is always recommended for recording all the time, but these are good in a pinch. Again, the more frequently it checks for motion, the more likely you are going to burn the battery up. Now again, I've got a solar panel, two batteries on mine, so I'm not too worried about killing the batteries. If you did not have the solar panel and you had to charge that battery all the time, uh, you're most likely going to want to put it on periodically and leave it on the one hour setting. The advanced motion detection, um, same thing here. You can set up the little perimeters around there. Um, same as we showed you on the, the video doorbell pro. I'm not going to go over that again. But basically you can, enter, you can introduce the zones to it. And the recording length, same thing. Um, you can record for 60 seconds, 20 seconds, 15 seconds, 120 seconds. That's how long it'll record after it starts, after it's been triggered. So the more it's recording, the, again, the shorter your battery life's going to be. <clears throat> if you want an extra battery, click on that and they'll sell you a new battery. Shared access and help content, obvious. Shared access is back to if you want to share your device with somebody else. We'll go back to the main page now. And that's the Ring app pretty much in a nutshell. There are a couple little smaller features on here. There are different features if you have an alarm system. But for the basic system for cameras, uh, that should cover just about everything you need to know about it. Sorry it was long-winded. It's hard to cover all that information. Tried to talk fast enough to get everyone through the whole video without clicking off of it. Tried to talk slow enough that you could understand me so people wouldn't click off of it. Uh, it's a really tough thing to do. It was a long video like that with a lot of information on it. And again, I'm going to try to break this out into separate little videos, so hopefully you watch the video. Um, please click on like and subscribe, and if you have comments or questions, please leave them below.